friends, it's Marjorie. I have a book I'd like to read today. I'm still at home. You're still at home. We can't go to the library and read, but I can read you a book about Andy and the Lion by James Doherty. And Andy is going to go to the library. He can go to his library. There we go. It was a bright day. My day's bright, it's bright outside. It was a bright day with just enough wind to float a flag and Andy started down to the library to get, I know what he's gonna get, a book, a book about lions, lions. He took the book home and read and read. He read all day, he read through supper and he read all evening. And just before bedtime, there he's still reading, and just before bedtime, his grandfather told him some tall tale stories about hunting lions in Africa. Every story ended with, and then I gave him both barrels. That night, Andy dreamed. All night he dreamed about hunting lions in Africa. Then at last, morning came. Andy woke up. The sun was looking in at the window, and Prince, his dog, was tugging at the bedclothes, and the lion had left. But Andy kept thinking about him, kept thinking about that lion. Andy thought lions on the back thought about lions on the back porch, and his father had to remind him to wash behind his ears. Andy was Still thinking about lions after breakfast when his mother gave his hair a final brushing. Oh, he looks very handsome. And Andy started off to school. Part two. Andy walked along swinging his books and whistling a tune. Can you whistle? I can whistle. He came to a turn in the road and he noticed something sticking out from behind a rock. It hadn't been there before. He didn't know what it was. It looked very queer to him. So Andy and Prince crept up cautiously to investigate. What is that? And suddenly it moved. Whoa. was a lion. At this moment, Andy thought he'd better be going. Yes, he better be going. The lion thought so too. They ran and they ran and they ran around. Whichever way Andy ran, there was the lion. Whichever way the lion ran, there was Andy. They just couldn't get away from each other. At last, both stopped for a breath. And the lion held out his paw to show that he had, a, look at that, he had a thorn stuck in it. He wanted to show Andy what was the matter. He had a thorn stuck in his paw. Oh, that must hurt. But, Andy had an idea. He told the lion to be patient and they'd have that thorn out in no time. Fortunately, Andy always carried, and I have a pair too, his pliers in his back pocket. He took them out and he got a grip on them. I got a grip on them and he gripped that thorn, he gripped it real tight. Andy braced one foot against the lion. And look, there's this paw, there's the thorn, there's the pliers, there's Andy. And with all his might, he pulled until the thorn, whoa, was out. The grateful lion licked Andy's face to show how pleased he was. 
That was his way of saying thank you, thank you, thank you. That feels so much better. But it was time to part. So they waved goodbye. Andy went on to school and the lion went off about his business. Just being a lion. Part three. Huh? A circus is coming to town? In the spring, the circus came to town. There was elephants and clowns and people and bands with music. Hi, clown. Lots of things in the circus to see. Of course, of course, Andy went. He wanted to see the famous lion act. Right in the middle of the act. Oh, the biggest lion. Right in the middle of the act, the biggest lion jumped out of the high steel cage and with a terrible roar, dashed through towards the people. They ran for their lives and they scrambled and Andy found himself. Where's Andy? Where did he find himself? <gasps> right in the lion's path. He thought this was his last moment. <gasps> There's the lion. There's Andy. Who should it be? It was Andy's own lion. They recognized each other. Hey, bud, how you doing? High five. And they danced for joy. And when the crowd came back ready to fight the lion and capture him, Andy stood in front of the lion and shouted to the angry people, Do not hurt the lion. He's my friend. The next day, Andy led the lion and all the people in a grand parade down Main Street to Town Hall, where the mayor presented Andy with a medal. It goes around his neck. A medal for bravery, and the lion was very much pleased. And the next day, Andy took the book back to the library. And one day we'll be able to return our library books to the library. But right now, the end. Andy and the Lion by James Doherty. Nice book. Friendly Lion. Well, we've just read a book, so that means we put a, another paper on our chain. Our chain is getting very long. Every time we read a book, we put a new paper on to make a link on our chain for all the books we're reading while we can't go to the library. Thank you for coming. Bye.